So I grew up uh, here in, in, in the city of Little Rock. I went to uh, Gibbs Elementary School, Dunbar Junior High School, and then a, a graduate of Horace Mann High School uh, in 1958. So I was a senior in high school during the 1957-58 uh, high school uh, Central High Crisis. So, um, you know, that meant that year sort of things just moved and didn't move. And, you know, all of a sudden it's now time and it was various other kinds of things. Plus, I had gotten engaged during my high school um, senior year. And so I wore this little engagement ring during the day and would take it off in the evenings <laughs> so that my parents didn't see it. But fast forward, I uh, got married right out of, out of high school, as, as so many youngsters did back at that during those times. But college was always still a part of what I knew I would do. And uh, I was the oldest of four children. And my parents were dead set on the fact that I would still go uh, to college. And I was familiar with Philander. And so Philander made an easy, it made an easy transition for me to be able to go to school uh, here in Little Rock. Now, it, it was just, I don't know, it, it was just something that I was driven to because of my love of people and my desire to help and to serve and this kind of thing. Uh, so I had worked in various campaigns and I was a member of a small group uh, called Black Female Action. And we were active in the community. And... Uh, I was very active in the PTA because my children in school and uh, so I always say politics for me was evolutionary. It, it, it evolved out of my service uh, to others and particularly in the PTA. So I said, PTA is responsible. <laughs> well, um, I uh, was on the city board, which is the equivalent of the city council for, um, for a city. We have a city manager form of government. And uh, when I first ran for office in 1973 to, just to, uh, to be on the uh, city board, I wasn't successful. Uh, there were five folk in the race and I came in third and I acted as though it was still a win. Uh, in the sense that it had given me um, a deeper yearning, so to speak, uh, to seek out elective office. And I wanted to do that because um, I had been in the practice of constantly going before various legislative bodies, trying to get something for our schools. You know, as I said, when you, when you work with the PTA, I mean, there are all kinds of needs. And so uh, I felt I was always playing the game Captain May I, because it was like going to this legislative body saying, can we do this? Or this legislative body saying that, look, we need uh, equipment uh, for the playground here, or this school needs this and this kind of thing. So you was, I was always trying to advocate uh, for something or an injustice uh, that was happening someplace. So. Uh, it seemed uh, to be able to really get something done. Uh, you need all of those things, but then I wanted to go another level and see if I couldn't help uh, be one of the change makers, so to speak. And that was part of my drive for uh, getting involved in uh, electoral politics, particularly as an elected official. So. <music> Oh yes, that was in the 70s. And so um, there, weren't very, there weren't very many blacks in elective office across the country and particularly here uh, in Arkansas. I think at that time uh, we had had three blacks to run and, and be successful uh, in citywide elections here in Little Rock. 
uh, at the time, at that time. And I ended up being the fourth one to run citywide. And at that time was the first black to get a majority vote uh, in 1980. Yes, uh, that uh, was a, a time uh, that I'm usually saying about various experiences. You know, every now and then you have uh, a pinch me experience. And so being uh, in city government, uh, becoming mayor, those were all pinch me experiences. Being elected a vice chair of the Democratic National Committee was truly a pinch me experience because it's opened up a whole new avenue of uh, not only political involvement, but the whole world in the sense of being able to interact, visit. I had the opportunity to visit uh, several countries, um, uh, giving the democratic message, trying to encourage women to uh, engage in politics, get active in politics across the uh, continent, various continents. And so uh, it was just a time that everything was growing, so to speak, uh, helped to organize a democratic, other democratic elected uh, officials, organizations to become members of the DNC. Because uh, the DNC is comprised of members from all of the uh, uh, 48 states as well as all of the 50 states as well as uh, territories. So uh, that means diversity uh, along the way there. And uh, uh, we, we strive for equal division, which is something that as a woman was very important to me. So uh, it, it it wasn't just dominated by males, which is, we all know in the 60s to 70s, uh, most organizations, most political organizations were dominated by men. And even now uh, with um, the increase in women elected officials, we're still far behind the men. There, we're nowhere near parity or, uh, or having equal division there, yet and still we're 53% of the population. Uh, so there was a little crossover there. I left city government in 1992. And uh, I've been, I was an officer for over 20 years uh, with the DNC from 1989 um, till 2009. <music> Well, one thing, you know, uh, Philander has always been an institution that really valued its students and took to heart uh, their students and tried to make certain that uh, its slogan of being uh, uh, an institution that promotes excellence and confidence and, and all in you, that it wasn't just lip service but it truly is where uh, Philanda wants to uh, go and the kind of information it wants to impart into its student body. So to me, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to go to college. And it's a great honor and privilege to be able to come to Philander Smith College, a college that, uh, as I say, is small enough where you can really get to know the students. Students can get to know their professors, instructors, uh, administration officers, you know, and get to know each other. Yet and still, it is large enough to give you the kind of exposure, the kind of experiences that will carry you forward for the rest of your life and equip you with all you need to be able to be the best you, you can be. So, Philanda is uh, living up to its promise, living up to its promise to help each and every one who walks through those doors move forward, be the best them they can be. <laughs>